Two American League teams. It's the Seattle Mariners against the Chicago White Sox. 2K Sports presents MLB 2K10. An afternoon at U.S. Cellular Field with the fans ready to rock and roll. Just moments from now, Eric Bedard. He'll be bringing his stuff to the mound to try and put up a W. 2K Sports presents our MLB broadcast. So great to have you with us. First month of the season coming to a close. Well, Steve, what's he got in store for Seattle hitters today? Well, it's got a report against this lineup is if you execute your pitches, hit your spots, keep the ball down on the zone, you can shut them down. And with a quality left handle like this on the mound, he shouldn't have too much difficulty. Brought to you by Pepsi. Here's the offense from Don Wakamatsu. Any of these bats stand out, John? Well, everyone in baseball needs a player like Sean Figg. Is a well, the Mariners with a loss last night in the three-game series after you drop those first two. Now is the time against the White Sox. Well, if I'm the skipper right here, I'm trying to shake things up a little bit just to try to find something to spark this team to get a turnaround. First at bat, game starts with a strike. Sometimes you do have to shake things up. What you don't want is complacency to set in, and they're a little worried about it. Hot shot towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. And it's Jose Lopez at the plate. He hit 333 last year against the White Sox here in Chicago. Ball. That one goes all the way back to the screen. It's a ball. Bedard gets set and delivers. Fastball just misses and he falls behind 2 0. Expectations were quite low for the Mariners in 2009. Going from 101 losses in 08. But that with 85 wins in 09, it put the team back on track, and now expectations starting to build. And there it is. That's our first hit of the ball game. The Seattle well, a winning record, obviously, is what you're going after. Well, Ultimately, the, the thing you want first is that division number one spot. And it's never going to be easy when you have teams like the Angels, who are a veteran team with that great oh. pitching. But this team can match up pitcher for pitcher with the, with the Angels. We'll see how this season plays out. Well, they're trying to do it with pitching and defense, which is exactly the way to rebuild. And if they get a little bit more offense, Great look for the Mariners to compete this year. Here's the pitch. You're up. Milton Bradley oh, swinging man. through it, and he's gone. With two Mike strikes, Taylor, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything junior. with it. And it's Ken Griffey Jr. at the plate. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Oh. Oh, it's a great fastball right there, down in the strike zone. Now there's so many ways to go. Let's see how he comes back to attack this hitter. In there, and this is going to be trouble. It's off the wall on a hop. And here's Lopez heading home. And he will score. Great base running. Now batting. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. RBI chance, Franklin Gutierrez. Getting out in front any time of the ball game, you want to do that. Now you try and build on it. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws to first side is retired. Well, some early production here. One run across in the first. The Mariners lead one to nothing. And doing the pitching, Ryan Roland Smith. He'll be starting this one off for Seattle. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Ryan Roland Smith has a live arm and the ability to get hitters out, especially left-handers. But it's important for him to command the fastball so that his secondary pitches become effective. If he falls behind and has to throw his fastball over the plate, he can get in trouble. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. Apparently he's looking for something a lot harder than that four-seam fastball. I don't know what else he has because he's way out in front. That first pitch was fouled off. It's 0-1. Here's the pitch. Swing, hot shot, and he's on. First batter up. That could be a good sign offensively. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. So who are you looking at, John? Well, the potential there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. 
He's number one in runs scored in the league. Well, definitely going to have to hold the runner close at first base. He can run. And boy, if he gets a second base, he's in scoring position and could tie this one up. It'll be Kochman. He's trying to keep him near the bag. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Here's the delivery. A swing and a miss. Alexei Ramirez is retired. What's a huge breaking ball at 78 miles per hour. A breaking ball right there gets him to swing. You can see that back leg kind of jelly bitten a little bit. He really used the off-speed pitches during that at bat to get it over with. And Paul Canerco to bat. Well, Paul Canerco just put together another solid season. He's never going to be a guy that hits for a great average, 265. But he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs in 152 games. Canerco is certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned in combined categories of runs and RBIs. He gets on base and he can bring base runners in. Yeah, and that's the thing. He scores runs with not a lot of speed. He's not a great runner. When he first came up with the Dodgers, the Dodgers thought they had a 40 homer, 120 RBI guy every year, but it took him a while to figure it out. But when he did, he became a really good, solid major league player. Swings at that fastball and misses 0 and 1. Now he's coming off a game last night where he had two big hits and looks like he's starting to get locked in a little bit. Swung on, lined over the first baseman's head. Can't cut it off. It's going to roll to the wall. And he'll stop at second base and it will be a double. Well, this is a guy right here that was made to hit fastballs, and that's what he looks for, and that's what he got right there. Put a good swing on it. He knew what to do with it for that double. And Beckham's in the box. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Well, you know in this situation right here that the hitter's always going to look for a fastball. The pitcher was smart, though he threw in that slider, got the hitter out in front to swing early. And he comes home, that's it, we are tied. Nice two-strike approach by the hitter, a high pitch up in the zone, able to fight it off and make contact and put it in play. Alex Rios batting with two runners on. Now they did not want to get too far behind in this ball game, so the, the importance of the production here is to get themselves even. That swung on line towards the gap in left center. And it's through into the gap. Should be extra bases. He scores, counted, and no longer tied. Now batting for the Chicago well, that's three White consecutive White hits he's given up. He can't be out of gas yet. He just has to bear down and get somebody out. They don't want to go to the bullpen this early in the game. The pitch. Line shot into center field. And that one to fall in, and the run will score. Now batting. But all the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches, or they're just figuring him out. Two men on, two men out. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. Last season, hit only 216 against the Mariners. Catcher can't control it. Now he's going to run for second. Hit sharply towards the hole. Base hit through the infield. Runner should score. Now batting. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, this guy's completely locked it out there now. They've strung together five consecutive hits against him. Clearly, he's run out of gas. And here's Mark Kotze. And Steve, the offense continues to produce. They keep building on it. A smash between short and third. Oh, wow. Another hit. They just won't quit. Well, they need a big out right here, Gary. I mean, they're giving up some runs in this inning. They need to get outs right now just, again, to show that they can get them. And for Sednik's batting, 
Well, I think we're seeing some padding here, although in this game there's no such thing as insurance runs, really. You've got the pitcher on the rope. You have to take advantage of it while he's down. Back there in deep left center. And Bradley puts that away to retire the side. So for Ryan Roland Smith, a disappointing inning. He'll need to settle down if he's going to pitch deep into this. Four runs allowed, one inning. And the Mariners coming up next. At the plate. First base, 311, Casey Bedard gets set and delivered. Hit up the middle, and Ramirez feels the ball, and that'll retire Kochman. Now, a look at the standings in the Western Division as we get through the first month of the season. It's brought to you by State Farm. First place, the Angels. Mariners in second place. Rangers in the third spot and in the fourth spot the A's it'll be cart batting he had three hits eight ABs last year against the White Sox oh. really bad pitch right there to ball here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch let's the 1 0 pitch go by 1 and 1. Well, the AL West was not very kind to the Chicago White Sox in 2009, and they need to turn that around. The 1-1 pitch. Ball Slider two. can't find the zone. 2-1. and one. For the White Sox against the West, they ended up going 15-18 and 18 on the uh, season. They had a pretty good run against the Angels, but that's the only team they had a winning record against. And that's shocking because the Angels had the best pitching in that division, so you'd wonder how the White Sox could beat them, but, you know, the Chicago White Sox, if they're going to. A liner headed for the hole. And Tian with the catch. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. It's going to be Wilson now. In his career, 269 off the White Sox. Slider just misses 1 0. Bedard gets set and delivers. He sends this one in the air towards center. It's down, a base hit. Well, with two outs and no one on base, chance of scoring a run seem pretty scarce, but they get that two out hit. Now they have some life. And Barnes in the box. It's now 0 and 1. Watch that fastball go by. No balls. One strike. Here's Bedard. Swung on. Line softly towards center, and that gets through for a base hit. Now we see Sean Figgins next. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate. He took advantage of it. He gets across the plate. He leads the entire division and runs. Rios will field. And that's out number three. No runs and a couple of hits. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. And here's the first one. That one's drilled to short. And Wilson brings that one in. Upcoming, the schedule for the Seattle Mariners. They wrap up the Chicago series today. They'll continue their road trip for the next series. The Royals hosting that one. That'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. After that, it's about defending home field. They go against the Rangers and their hitting star, Michael Young. A team that will definitely give them a competitive series. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Leading the MLB in batting average. He delivers. That one swung on its line. And that one is in there. His second hit today. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham. One of the offensive leaders in the game this year. And obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense. is somebody they've really come to rely upon. A runner on first with two outs. Now the first pitch. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0 and 1. 
He's gone one for four in his career against Ryan Roland Smith. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Here's the pitch. Towards the middle. A tremendous situation now for the White Sox. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. And Alex Rios up. Now picked up three big base hits in the game last night. Swinging the bat very well. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. That one swung on and put in play. It'll be Gutierrez. That'll do it as they put that one away. The inning completed, Ryan Roland Smith. Not having the start he'd imagine. And Jose Lopez will lead it off. Leads the division in hits. First one to Lopez. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a smash. One away now. Here's how the Central Division race is shaping up in late April, courtesy of State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In the second spot, the Twins. In third place, it's the Royals. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And here's Milton Bradley. Now he gets walked a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch. Hard grounded to short. Fielded by Ramirez. And that'll set down Bradley. Right fielder, number 24. And Ken Griffey Jr. Griffey Jr. Now Przinski positions himself. Here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch. He swings and nails a liner. And that'll put Griffey Jr. on it first. And, and that'll bring up Franklin Gutierrez. Center fielder, number 21. Grounded out last time. Runner on first, two away. First pitch to him. Swung on line to right center field. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. Griffey Jr. towards third base. And he is safe at third ahead of that play. That's a great situation for some offense. A couple on and a couple away. Casey Kochman grounded out his last time up. Well, good speed at first base right here. He can really run. Don't be surprised if we see him try to steal and get a second runner in scoring position. Here's the 1-0. On the outside corner, 1-1. One and one. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. Liner between first and second. Beckham. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. The White Sox still on top. Leading it off, A.J. Brzezinski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. Here's the first pitch. Hit sharply down the line, and he cannot cut it off. And this rolls all the way to the wall. A look here at the Mariners in the American League as the season ramps up. First and triples, third in walks, and they're ranked third in ERA. Pitching and defense, a huge asset for any team to win. The pitching getting the job done here. But Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. And Mark Tiana, one of the best batting averages in the league. Swing and a line at a right center. That one is in there and should score Pierzynski. He throws and Pierzynski comes in. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce and they are. Nice piece of hitting right there. He manages to drive that high 0-1 pitch for a base hit. 
Good patience, good pitch recognition. Sure looked like the hitter had decided he wasn't going to get behind 0-2. He was going to wail. Uh, he was aggressive, no question about it. Got a pitch he could handle and took advantage. And Conce retired. At the plate. Well, we've got a moment to look back to last year's Chicago White Sox and see how they were. Sixth in home runs, sixth in stolen bases, and they were in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position, getting a lot of clutch base hits, and that's a great stat for a team that wants to win ball games. And he's out in front on that pitch, so he's in the hole now, 0-2. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. And Figgins brings that one in. And that will not get the runner home from third base. So they pick up a run on two hits and leave no one on. The White Sox, four. It'll be Cart batting. Seattle Mariners, designated hitter number 59, Mike Clark. Bedard gets set and delivers. First pitch, fastball, 0 and 1. Oh, good life on this fastball as he just buries it down and away. Strike two. Swings on the 0 1 pitch, can't hit it. Strike two. Line softly to center field. That should be a base hit. And that'll bring Jack Wilson to the plate. Steve, looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of eye-hand coordination. Fastball is high, 1-0. He went 2-10 for 10 last year against the White Sox here in Chicago. That one swung out of miss by Jack Wilson. That strike will leaving it up. Well, anytime you can spot your slider down in the strike zone, you're going to have a shot towards the hole. Nobody's able to get under that one. It falls a base hit. That's a great situation for some offense. Well, this is great patience at the plate. He lets the ball get deep in on the plate, comes in toward his hands, keeps his hands inside the ball, and drives it the other way. You make yourself a whole different ball player if you can take the ball the other way, as he just did. And he's in there at first. Now we see Sean Figgins next. Steve, you're going to like the odds right here. You get that base hit, and all of a sudden, this game changes. Now, if he hits one over the ball, too, it completely changes the complexion of this game. They've had to battle back. Here's a chance to get the lead. Here's a look at what's coming up for the White Sox. They wrap up the Seattle series today. They'll have a tomorrow off. After that, they meet up with Ian Kinsler and the always difficult Rangers. That series bound to be competitive. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it's a road trip to take on the Yankees and the fan favorite Alex Rodriguez, who lead their division as well. And that's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. Now, here comes the runner for the plate. Tagged at home, and he is out of there. So they pick up two hits in the inning, but leave the bases loaded. The White Sox maintaining their lead. box it's Ramirez and for run scored he's got more than anyone else in the AL first pitch on the way swing sends this one on the line to right center this one rolls through to the wall Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Third most in hits, fourth in batting average with runners in scoring position. And as you can see, that ability to make contact is there, hitting for a very high average, ranked among the top ten hitters in the league. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's the league leader in ribbies. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And Conerco retired. Now coming to bat for the Chicago White Sox. Right Runner on second RBI Number opportunity for Carlos Quinn. He's the league leader in hits. The pitch. Here's a swing, a fly ball deep down the line and right. Ramirez is headed for third. Now coming to bat for the Chicago White Sox. And Beckham's in the box. Got a one for four in the season against Ryan Roland Smith. And the first pitch. Swing sets this one pretty well. Deep right center. Gutierrez. 
And that's out number three. They get a man to third, but can't bring him home. And Milton Bradley to bat. You'll get things started. Fifth inning. Milton Bradley gets set. Here's the first pitch. That's hit foul by Bradley. No balls, one strike. Here's Bedard. Started to go around. That pitch is in there anyway. 0 and 2. Still 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. And he fouls another one off. Well, you can tell right there that the batter is in protection mode. Anything close, he's just trying to put it in play. The You're fact out. that he fouled it off will keep this at bat going. Down on strikes there. Nice piece of pitching. Well, 90 miles per hour on the gun, but still not much movement. And it's Ken Griffey Jr. in the box now. A two for eight last year against the White Sox here in Chicago. First pitch is a slider low, 1-0. But if you're going to miss, this is where you want to miss. Throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone. If the hitter swings and puts it in play, it's a ground ball out. And Griffey Jr. swings and misses at it. That'll even it up. 1-1 one, one pitch. And he looks at a fastball in there, and it's 1-2 and two now. Well, they set up down and away. They throw it down and away. That's how you can be effective as a major league pitcher. That one's drilled to short. And Tian with the catch. There's more MLB this Thursday. It'll be Albert Pools and the St. Louis Cardinals will be playing host to the visiting Atlanta Braves. Things will get going at 1.30 Eastern. Oh, Gary, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. First pitch on the way. And that's off the plate away, 1-0. One oh on the way. And that one outside. Gutierrez lays off. No hits in two at bats. Lifetime against Bedard. Now swing and a shot towards second. Throws to first in time. That's three down. And a good defensive half inning. Three up, three. It's a nice day here. A little bit on the chilly side, but certainly not enough to detract from the game. And he starts Rios out. Hot shot towards the hole. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. Well, anytime you can get on base with no outs to start an inning, you know that an extra base hit will probably score you. But even if the batter behind you can figure out a way to get on base, now you have the potential for a huge inning. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored, top five. One away. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And Mark Tiana had an RBI double this last Mark time. Tien. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs and a major factor in this offense. Here's the pitch. That ball is swung on and hit. Gutierrez is ready to field. It's two down. Stepping up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. And Mark Kotze up. Number 30, Mark Kotze. And Bard calls for the pitch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0 and 1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. That one swung on and put in play. It'll be Gutierrez. He dives. Oh, what a play. And that's Ryan Roland Smith. That's another good three outs. Not his best start. Pitching deep into this one, and that's good for the bullpen. And the Mariners coming up next. Here's a look at Don Wakamatsu. The thoughts of a manager. One can only speculate, but at this point, you got to believe he's, he's got some words for that next practice. 
First pitch of fastball. That's in there for a strike. When you can spot your four-seam fastball to the outside corner, the hitter has to have balance at the plate and not pull off the ball. Ball! Well, that one's way back to the backstop. Not a pretty pitch. No damage. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And it's caught by Ramirez. That's one away. It'll be Cart batting. Three for eight lifetime record against the White Sox. On the way. Sliders in there for a called strike. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. The one-two pitch. That swung on and grounded up the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. In time for the up. It's going to be Wilson now. Two for two in the game. And here's the first one. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. Oh, that's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. There's a called strike of the belt, so he's in the hole now, 0-2. This one foul back. Swung on, that is hit. Throws on to first, side is retired. Nothing doing here in this half inning. White Sox five, Seattle one. And for Sednik's batting. Left fielder, number 24, Scott Posednik. First pitch. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple hits. Line fair down the line and right. And this one gets down. It'll head out towards the wall. Pulls into second with that double. So he's in scoring position now with nobody out. But what a great swing right there. And anytime you can put yourself in scoring position with no outs, you're looking for big things to happen. And it'll be Brandon Lee doing the pitching as the Mariners bring in their reliever. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. Fastball swung out of miss, 0 and 1. One away. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. Paul Canarco to the plate, runner in scoring position, while leading the league in home runs. And he starts Canarco out, takes a swing at that fastball, can't connect on one. Pitch on the way, swung on, hit, league. He's out. Two away. But a quick recovery that time gets the out. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos. Quentin. RBI opportunity right here for Carlos Quinton. And he hits the ball. Right now he leads the AL. First pitch to Quinton. A line drive towards the hole. There's the throw. In time for the up. They pick up no runs on one hit and leave a man at some. And Bard's in the box. He'll lead off the seventh. Here's the first pitch. Ball. First pitch inside, ball one. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes, get outs right now. Strike. Slider waved at, missed, one and one. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating pitch, and the hitter just couldn't catch up. He watches the one one pitch, takes a fastball, strike two. This is the go to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. You're Swing and a miss on the slider. Yeah. One out. Up to the plate. At 80 Seattle miles per hour, that's pretty good movement right there. It's down in the zone, but it's definitely a hittable pitch. Looks like the pitcher just caught him looking for something else, and it threw off his timing. Outstanding work right there, John. And uh, for the rest of the lineup, maybe they'll be second guessing the next time around when they face him, especially with two strikes. Oh. 
And he misses high. Bedard can't get him to go after it. Well, Sean Figgins, one of those pesky offensive players. He scratches and claws, does anything he can to get out. Swung on, hit softly, line to left. And that'll put Figgins on first. Now and that brings up Jose Lopez. Lopez. Every Second team's got to have an igniter at the four. top. We call them okay. table setters. Okay. That's what Sean Figgins is. And now with the Seattle Mariners, what a dynamic offense with Ichiro and Figgins at the top of that lineup. A lot of guys on base and a lot of speed on those bases as well. Bedard gets set and delivers. The fastball is in there. It's 0-1. Gary went out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And Lopez set down. Now, oh, heck, they might have been able to get the out at second, at least getting the lead runner, but at least they got the sure out at first. Bradley gets set. Here's the first pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. And they'll record the out at first base. Good timing on that play. Well, he might not have been able to get him out of the plate, but a short run over the first, and he still retires his man. And Beckham's in the box. Second baseball. Number 15, Jordan Beckham. The pitch. Ah, uh, and he can't catch up with that one. 0-1. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Goodbye, home run. Add one more to that lead. Solo, big fly ball up by five. Take a look at this pitch on the lower outside part of the plate. That normally stays in the park. Not this time. Boy, you got some great wrist action and strength to be able to launch one that's located down there. White Sox now, lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Center fielder. Number 51. Alex. No outs and the base is empty. And he starts Rios out. Swung on line to right center field. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. He'll hold there at second base. Credit him with a double. Well, just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. It's going to be Przinski. That one lofted in the air. Now with that two run homer they extend that lead to seven. Well another one right there Gary and that's two home runs and for this team today and it's they're spreading the wealth. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Number no outs and nobody on. Mark Tien. First one to Tien. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed 0 and 1. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two. Up the middle. Now up to the Tell you what, Steve, that really was a great play and well worth another look. So many good things going on right there. Well executed play. Katze into the batter's box. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. First pitch. Here it comes. Hot shot towards the hole. And that's now going to bring Scott Posadnik up. Oh, this is a tough piece of hitting right here. The ball Number in on his hands, able to fight it off and drive it the other way. That's a quintessential kind of inside out base hit. First pitch to him. Well hit towards the middle. Gets one at second. And they get two. Great double play. But they strike for three runs here thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Meet of the lineup coming to the plate. Isaac well, Ian taking Alabama. a look at you right there. And now his lineup is in overdrive. A exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. And 
we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Well, this was an outstanding performance today. I mean, that's good starting pitching right there. He won't be able to finish what he started, but he pitched a heck of a ball game. Here's the pitch to Griffey Jr. And that one's going to be outside. Ball one. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so they. they There's a bullet towards third. And in there for a base hit. He's three now for four today. We talk about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. Gutierrez at the plate. And here's the first one. Hit up the middle. Wow, that looks close. Right back up the middle. Almost got him. Now Seattle, here's their Seattle shot Maryland. right now. First base. Not wasting any time here. He jumps all over that first pitch and rips it into center field. Hit hard to second. He plays it on the hop. There's one. And they turn the double play. That Keystone area can get a little rusty. Nice turn on the double play. Just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. It'll be Carp batting. We'll try it again here. Just one for three thus far. And the first pitch. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. The White Sox eight. Seattle one. Batters two through four coming right up. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. He's had one hit four times up. Now, Gary, I think you're losing a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing, so interesting move. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Fastball swung out and missed, struck him out, went away. With two strikes, the hitter wanted the fastball. He got it, but didn't do anything with it. And Paul Canerco to bat. Over his lifetime, 293 off Seattle. Lined up the middle, fielded by Lopez. And Canerco retired. Right fielder, number 20. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Grounded out last time. First pitch to Quinton. Line towards first. And it gets down. That's hit number three on the ball game and five at bats. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham up. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in hits. And he's also first in on-base percentage. That knack of getting on base better than anybody else. He can spoil a pitcher's pitch, work the count, he knows the strike zone extremely well. Two outs and a man on first. Now the first pitch. Chases that first pitch. Starts off with a strike. Two outs in this inning, but a man on first base. And Gary, you know, they, they've just got to find a way to get it out. Get a ground ball, get the force out at second. Get in there and see if you can't score some runs. And that one swung on and missed by Gordon Beck. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand it. And the Mariners coming up next. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Cruck, bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And it's Jack Wilson to lead us off. Here's Wilson's first look. Here's a swing and a line drive. And that's going to be a base hit for Wilson. Coming to bat. Or just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. It's going to be Johnson now. Runner on first. And here's the pitch. Ground ball headed for the middle. And he grabs this one. That's one out. And two, double play. 
And a great throw right there. Second base, strong arm. Arm strength critical, turning the double play. It can be a matter of a split second to get the out. Great double play. And here's Sean Figgins. He singled and he has lasted back. Two outs and nobody on. Fresh count, Figgins, here it comes. Swing and a line at a right center. And that'll put Figgins on first. And that brings up Jose Lopez. Second baseman, number four. He bounced out his last time. A runner on first with two outs. First one to Lopez. Here's the pitch. Ready with a 1 0. That's a foul ball. I think he caught that thing. That was a rocket. Unbelievable. You look uh, for somebody to be injured on a play like that. Instead, you got, got a guy who caught the ball. That's why they're all patting him on the back, because he saved their lives. And a fly ball, and this could be it. And you just saw it, folks. That's going to be the last play of this game. But it went a great one here today, Gary, and it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. Well, we'd like to grant the Pepsi Clutch Performance Award now. Well, the heat was flowing in this game today. This pitcher came right out there with that great fastball and challenged these hitters. He did give up the one earned run, but the offense gave him just enough support that he needed to get a very impressive win. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Now, uh, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. Thanks for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We wrap it up. I'm Gary Thorne with John Crux, Steve Phillips, and our 2K Sports group. We'll see you soon.